Premium vehicles have and always will be a hot topic among the War Thunder player base for a multitude of reasons. The terms pay to win or premium bias get thrown around quite a lot within the forums, the War Thunder subreddit, YouTube comments, etc. Now a lot of you may think these are redundant terms that don't really carry any weight or genuinely get considered, but regardless of what you think about premium vehicles, there are some blatant issues that seem to get worse with new additions that come along with the major updates. In this video, I'm going to break down the issues that I and many others have been vocalizing for quite some time. Before we get into the juice of this video, let's do a little experiment. I'm going to play five games of 9.7 Air RB, arguably one of the most unenjoyable battle ratings in the game currently. And I'm going to look at all the players on my team and count the number of premium vehicles relative to the number of total players on the team. All five of these games were played consecutively and every single one had 12 person teams, except for my second one because one person left so that one I just counted as 11. So here are the results. Five games and I encountered 35 premium vehicles out of 59 players or about 59% premium vehicles. Remove me from the equation, and that's 35 premium vehicles out of 54 players, about 64%. Now, I don't know about you guys, but 64% of players playing premium vehicles at 9.7 seems like a huge number. Now, why does this even matter? Why do I and so many other players that have been around for a while care so much about these premium vehicles blowing up the matchmaker? Let's take a look at a couple of aircraft that I think are perfect examples of what I think is wrong with this premium issue we have going. Premium A-10 and the Premium Su-25. I'm sure all of you regulars are so surprised I have something to say about this. Because I'm sure you've never heard me talk about these things before. And the rest of you that are either new to the channel or maybe slightly new to War Thunder might be thinking, what? These planes don't perform that well, what's the problem with them? Which to be honest is a fair question, but it's not actually an issue of the aircraft performance, it's an issue of the missiles that they carry. These are both ground attack aircraft that really don't even have any business as air-to-air -air fighters. However, in game, the A-10 can carry AIM-9Ls and the Su-25 carries R-60Ms. These aircraft sit at very low battle ratings to be carrying such advanced missiles, especially the Su-25. It sits at 9.7, and if you're a regular here, you've already heard my thoughts about that fairly recently. The premium A-10 did sit at 9.7 until earlier today, today being when I'm making this video, I don't know when this is going to be out, but now it's at 10.0. Nevertheless, I still think a 9 ls don't belong at 10.0 either, and frankly no all aspect missiles should be anywhere below top tier in my opinion. In the case that there are any of you still wondering why this is an issue, let's take a look at some of the aircraft that can run into these missiles. F-Sabers, MiG-15 Biz, MiG-17, J-29s, the list goes on. Now what do these aircraft all have in common? First off, they are all from an older era when technology was not nearly as advanced as when R-60Ms and a 9 ls were being used. Secondly, none of these aircraft have flares. You cannot dodge an R60M or A9L if fired from rear aspect without flares, and most of the time you won't be able to dodge from the front aspect either. Although I suppose there's a higher chance of you dodging if the situation is near perfect, but if you don't have flares, it's gonna be extremely difficult. This is really a shame because some of my favorite aircraft are no longer a fun experience to play. Things like the F-2 Sabre, the MiG-15 Biz, and even the MiG-19s with their cracked flight performance aren't very enjoyable because they don't have flares. So many of the jets you face have 30G all aspect missiles and the majority if not all of them are premiums. Even AIM-9Gs with their mere 18G overload are still quite a difficult dodge with the recent missile tracking update. I've been doing some thinking about why this is a problem in the first place and I think there are two reasons. The first being easier accessibility into the higher tiers of the game for new players, and the second, Gaijin is a business and their goal is to make profit. But let's dig here a little bit. First, let's look at it from the perspective of a new player. For those of you who don't know, War Thunder will pay non-War Thunder gaming or historical YouTube channels to promote the game. I've seen it quite a bit on channels that I watch. In fact, in the past I've seen entire War Thunder videos made by non-War Thunder gaming channels because they were being sponsored by Gaijin. In fact, I specifically remember a Frankie on PC in 1080p video that was a War Thunder sponsored video of a few years ago. I don't know if they still seek out content creators to pay them to make entire videos, but I know they've done it before. Anyway, why is this relevant? Say someone sees a War Thunder ad in their favorite creator's video, and they happen to be a fan of military aviation technology. The game would be a wet dream for someone who has a fascination with military aviation or tanks. They'd see the F-14, their favorite airplane, in a video game where you can face other players who are flying other semi-historically accurate planes from the same era. That's awesome, right? 
Then that person realizes they won't ever get to their favorite plane without shelling out some cash for a premium vehicle and premium time. And even then, it'll take a really long time, especially for a new and experienced player. Now, let's look at it from Gaijin's perspective. Now, I'm not saying I like this because clearly I don't, but Gaijin is a video game company that aims to make the most profit possible over all else. That's just how businesses work, even though most of us don't like how it affects us. Whether it be a tech mega corporation like Facebook or TikTok, a cell phone company like Apple, or even something as humble as your favorite local restaurant, businesses will do what they can to maximize their profits. It's why TikTok sells your data to advertisers. It's why Apple uses cheap and likely immoral labor in factories overseas with nightmarish working conditions. It's why even your favorite local restaurant likely pays their servers as little as possible, forcing them to rely on customers to tip well. Okay, I'm getting off track. You get the point. I want to call back to something I mentioned in the introduction of this video, specifically about the pay to win part. Whenever I mention a premium vehicle on stream, it seems like someone either says that plane is pay to win or ask me if the plane is pay to win. There really isn't a clear answer to whether or not the whole game is pay to win, but there are some things to be said about certain premiums and their performance. In my opinion, the most prime example of pay to win is the SU-11, but you all probably know that already. That plane is completely busted, and I don't know if it's intentionally at too low of a battle rating or if it's actually balanced off of the player's stats like every other plane in the game. But if you've played it or you've played against it, you know what I'm talking about. So the premium problem. Are there things that need to be addressed? Yes, absolutely. I just hope they are addressed one day. But in the end, War Thunder is a game designed for profit just like every other video game, and there's really not anything necessarily wrong with that. But Gaijin's monetization methods are definitely pretty aggressive. Okay, before I wrap up this video, I do want to clarify something. I love War Thunder. It's been my favorite game for years, despite its many problems. It's the only video game I still play, and it's the only one that even manages to capture my attention still. When I make videos like this, it's out of love for the game, and my desire for it to be the best it can be. I hope I'm doing a good enough job of being critical while not being too negative about it. Please let me know if you thought it was too negative or cynical. I tried my best to remain as reasonable as possible throughout this, so feedback is welcome. It's completely cool whether you agree or disagree. Drop your thoughts in the comments and maybe even think of some solutions to this problem. I would like to see some genuine discussion around this. Alright, that's going to be it for me today. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.